Hello everyone, I'm Rob Bennett, he's Dan O'Hara, and this is the Sports Express Network. This week, we're going to bring you week one coverage of the Auburn Pride semi-professional football team, and we're also going to do interviews with the Skinny Atlas Lakers varsity baseball team who won their first Section 3 Class B baseball championship since 2004. From Pop Warner to the Dome, from 5Ks to marathons, from Little League to Work Leagues, focusing on the community sports lifestyle in Central New York. Oh, do it, do it, do it, go on and do it. So we're going to talk some Auburn Pride football game uh, this past Saturday against uh, Moreau County Sting. Didn't go as planned. Offensive struggled a little bit. Yeah. Um, Got a little quarterback issue to iron out. Um, we got a little penalty issue to, to iron out. I think we had 15 penalties for 500 yards, felt like. Um, but, uh, hey, that game's over. Got to talk about this Saturday, uh, 5 o'clock at, at uh, Seward School. Free game for the community. Come on out, Port Pop Warner. But let's, uh, let's, let's talk about what happened Saturday. We had a lot of missed opportunities uh, on the offensive side. Um, I think we we dropped a couple dropped a couple touchdowns, um, missed out on a few throws, uh, didn't have a completed pass, but um, our run game held strong. Um, we uh, put the team on the back, or Hen Henry Badley took put the team on his back, um, you know, with a, a strong running performance. Um, you know, when in doubt, we we just went to the run, and I think that was. Uh, it's good for the future. Yeah, um, let's not forget about the Hogs up front as well. Yeah. Those guys really did their job opening yeah. up some holes for Henry. But yeah. I, I agree, there were times where I didn't see much, and Henry made something out of nothing. Yeah. But um, it was definitely the, the strength of the offense in, in week yeah. one. Yeah, he finished up with uh, 88 yards on 18 carries, so not a bad day for, for Henry. Mm -hmm. uh, a little low on what he normally accumulates. He's a, he's a good you know, 120, 150-yard-a-game guy. Uh, we'll take it. Look at his only uh, touchdown run here, uh, Greg. You surprised me. Went into a full backfield, the power formation, Oklahoma, and uh, it seemed to pay off. We were moving the ball pretty well, yeah. and uh, here's Henry's touchdown. Danny under center. It doesn't get e any easier than that, right there. Yeah, that touchdown. was a big, that was a big play right there. It's uh, the beginning of the fourth quarter. Prider down four. Uh, Prider down 12 to nothing. That's fourth and goal right there. Um, big play to get the pride back into the game. Zach Singer adds the extra point. Beautiful kick. Could have been probably good from 40. So uh, at that point, it was 12-7. And, uh, and then uh, here comes the mistakes. You know, you had them. We had them down fourth and I think it was 15. They ran a fake punt. Jabron uh, Thomas uh, went from the quarterback spot to defensive uh, corner, which he made a huge impact in the game, knocked the guy out far, you know, short of the first down. But flags came out because we had a couple guys blocking uh, the gunner, and they they blocked him all right. They blocked him 15 yards out of bounds, brought the flag, automatic first down. Auburn did get get a chance to get the ball back. Yeah, um, that was a tough spot right there. Like we said, yeah. it seemed at that point in time, Pride had the momentum going. It seemed to me as though the Monroe County thing they were starting to. Uh, Starting to feel it a little bit, and that was our opportunity to get the ball back about the 40-yard line and um, put Henry, the Henry Bradley show right back into play, score a touchdown, and, and go up. Just a, a huge play um, for that penalty to be called in that situation, giving them the ball, and they marched down the field, and I ended up scoring another touchdown to uh, put it up two scores, and we never really recovered from that. So big play right there. Um, just can't have those types of penalties. Yeah, get that ball back at the, you know, our 40, whatever it was, 48-yard yeah. line, and, and being able to, you know, put our run game back to use and, and go down and score. I think, uh, I think it would have been a little different outcome, especially with the leg of Zach Singer with his extra points. Mm -hmm. Would have put, put us up 14 to 12 at that point. Um, so... Got some things to work out. Uh, Jabron Thomas went in at quarterback. Uh, he struggled a little bit. We moved him to defense, and he came alive def defensively. He he was uh, he, he played very well. So in came Danny Giannone, um, and he dislocates his ankle. So you know, hearts go out to Dan as his season's over. We're thinking about uh, you, Danny. So we got to go back to the drawing board. Greg's been working with a with a young man from Geneva. Played. 
high school football in Geneva, um, getting him his reps at quarterback, and, uh, you know, we'll see Saturday uh, what happens. Yeah. But let's talk about that defense, man. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you what, there's some studs on that squad. Yeah. You've got number 24, Kasim Jones, uh, plays defensive end, who was just absolutely everywhere. And when you watched him and he made a mistake, he is so athletic and fast that he makes up for his mistakes and makes the play. I mean, it was just some some of the things he did was was incredible. Here he is playing the edge, uh, just to show his speed. And you know, I don't understand why nobody even looked to block this kid because amazing. He's just so quick and fast. And of course, you look, you got three guys in their backfield, um, and this was all night. Yeah. That that quarterback was running for his life uh, the majority of the time. Uh, let's take a look at another one. This is uh, this is Kasim again playing the edge. Um, gets off of that block. Oh, he's got two, three guys blocking him, but somehow he, he gets off it, comes in and makes the tackle. One, two, three, four maroon jerseys around that ball carrier. So they swarm to the football. They're very aggressive, and this defense loves to hit. And this is a play, you know, the, the receiver was okay, but this is a play James Royal – Brought the wood on this play. It drew a 15-yard penalty, but it also took a touchdown out of our hands. Uh, the quarterback scrambles, throws it. Boom, big hit by James Rowe. Picked off by Sultani Campbell. He's going down the sidelines. They whistle it dead. It was an inadvertent whistle. Um, otherwise, it would have been a, a touchdown and then a 15-yard penalty at the kickoff. So that took a you know touchdown out of our hands, but hey. At least they know we're there to play. Yeah, Dan, let's talk about that a little bit. I know that uh, safety is a, is a huge factor in high school games and, and Pop Warner games. And in my belief, they've changed the rules to make it a safer game, which is good for everyone. Um, when you look at that play, do you see that as being a helmet-to-helmet contact? Do you see that as making too aggressive a play? on a wide receiver, a defensive wide receiver that can't see the ball? Or what do you see there? That's a good question because, listen, football players make plays. That's what they do. And in that split second, your your job is to, to, to make a play. Yep. So regardless of whether your head is on his helmet or to off to the side – um, I, I have the luxury of slowing that down, blowing it up, and taking a look at it. And that was all shoulder. Yeah. But from a referee standpoint, you know, it happened so quick. We don't have instant replay. He he called it. It you know, I mean, you want you want to be safe, but you also don't want to take you know the excitement away from the game. But I will say that Monroe County hit one of our players the same way yeah. and didn't draw a foul. So I, you know, I'm not. You know, I'm not seeing the, you know, if he if he'd have called the hit on Trey Backus, a 15 yard mm -hmm. penalty, then you know it's the same type of type of hit. Well, is the rule the same in semi-professional football, NFL football, as it is at the high school level? The NFL rules. We play by NFL rules in, yep. in this league. Um, they do make some minor changes, but it comes down to interpretation. Yeah. You know, you'll get a set of refs that interpret it one way, and then you'll get another set of refs that interpret it another way. And unfortunately, that's you know, when you when you put the games in the referees' hands, you know, yeah. it's a toss up on what you'll get. Sure, and and that's just my question because obviously we're having high school referees do these games, and we're lucky to have them. Um, you know, but just wondering if they know the nuances between the two is just my question. Yeah, they, they were at the NFA meeting. Dwayne Cease, who I think does a great job with his crew, right. they came to the NFA meeting. We went over the rules, and he conveys them to the rest of his, his crew. So, you know, mistakes happen. It's, you know, the nature of being a referee. I wouldn't want to do it, sure. um, especially when you got coaches and players yelling at you constantly about the calls you make can't see everything all the time and you, you you can't make the right call all the time so you know that's what you get and you got to you got to you got to take the referees out of the game you got to got to win the game yeah. you know put put points on the board and and you know yeah. go forward i never you know blame a referee for losing a game sure um and I, i'm and i'm glad that you said that and i don't want to get too controversial here um you know bo murphy who was the head coach last year I, I love the guy he's a great guy 
but he seemed to go ballistic at the end of the game because of the call on the 4th and 15 where the player was blocked out of bounds, not understanding what the call was, and got really heated. And, you know, just kind of from an outsider's perspective, how does he lose control like that when he doesn't really even understand the, the call that was made on the field? Well, I guess I'm a different kind of coach. I'm I'm a little more relaxed. I want to I want to know what the call is, and uh, I mean we'll take a look at it right here. It was a punt. It was fourth down, and I, I don't know what the yardage was. It was fourth and long, and uh, you know uh, Monroe County decided to run a, a fake punt. We were in a return uh, defense, and. We thought the initial call, here it is here, and uh, if you look at the top of the screen, you see the two guys, and then Shamar pushes the guy 15 yards out of bounds. You see the guy actually pulling out the, the flag. Everybody thought on the field, and I thought as well, that JB's hit out of bounds. They said, oh, he hit him 15 yards out of bounds, and we all thought that that was the play. And, uh, you know, not allowing the referees to explain it to you, what they saw, you know, could have made a world of difference at that, at that moment. Sure. Um, but did we deserve that penalty? Absolutely. Because, you know, you got a couple guys, you know, trying to be aggressive. They're blocking the guy 15 yards out of bounds. And then the ball carrier runs behind him where once the guy steps out of bounds, he's done. Okay. Referee will throw his hat. He's out of bounds. Can't be the first one back in play, you know, to touch the football. And they probably could have made a play and we could have turned the ball over inside the 50 and and been in great shape. So it's, you know, comes down to making mistakes and, 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 you know, not paying attention. But. Yeah, and you can never blame the, the officials for the, the outcome of a game. So, you know, just going back and again talking about the defense, they basically got, got beat because one guy was extremely athletic and went up and caught a couple balls over our cornerback's head. He just, he just went up and made a play. Defensive back is in perfect position. Kid just went up and made a play, and, uh, and that was the, really the difference in the game, and the per- only way that, that they moved the ball. Pretty much all three times. Yeah. Our corners in it. Listen, you know, I tell quarterbacks that come into this league that, that play quarterback, you got to allow your players to make plays. You know, Syracuse does a great job of that. they got a quarterback that puts the ball up there, and their wide receivers go and get it. And, you know, that's one thing that I think Auburn is lacking. I, I don't think we have the, the guys that go up and get the ball. So – you know, if you want to make plays, you've got to put that guy in an opportunity to make a play. So if the quarterback throws the ball up, that, that receiver that Monroe County had went up and got it. And, and great plays, great, yeah. great athleticism. Um, you know, the guy was six foot five uh, and could leap out of the stadium, but their quarterback put the ball in a position where he could make a play, and he did. So. Yeah, and just, just one more comment that I want to make about the defense. And again, you know, JB had a hard time on offense and I feel bad for him I know he felt bad for it but when he went in on defense he was he was a game changer they stopped catching those balls but there's one play I don't know if you have it but it was late probably middle of the fourth quarter and Monroe ran a reverse back to JB's side they had the entire thing set up beautifully and JB got between it must have been five six offensive lineman that only had to block him and he made his way through and, and made that tackle and uh, you know I went up to him at that time and just said dude that was a, a, a heck of a play and uh, but the defense just kept making plays like that all night play after play I, don't, I, I mean I don't know what the you know the stats on their side came out to be but you know they probably didn't have 25 yards rushing I mean they they just they just didn't yeah. uh, we, we were in the backfield constantly and uh, making plays. And, you know, you got the guys on the edges. You got, you know, JB that you put out at corner, and you've got, you know, M- Miguel Martinez, and you've got Delquan Ross. And these guys are some of the best open field tacklers sure. that I've I've had an opportunity to see. Yeah. And, and then you put, you know, you've got uh, Kasim Jones, you've got Buck on the edge, and you got D'Lo, and then you, you pepper in a little R.J. Sharp, and then you – you know, you, you you throw in Colin, and it just it, the rotation is great. Keeps guys fresh. And oh, by the way, this Saturday we got a couple guys that are eligible to play. That's great. Um, you got that Marquise Barnes kid. Is I've never seen legs that big in my <laughs> life, but uh, he's a big kid, and sure. uh, uh, I think it's pronounced Cotty Cote Cote Cote. Yeah. Um, this kid's come to a bunch of practices. He's finally eg- eligible this week. And uh, kind of excited to see what he can do. Yeah. Uh, he's quick, fast, agile. You know, we'll see what happens. They're yeah. going to need it against Troy because that's a good football team. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, 
you know, move off of the defensive side and, and talk a, a little bit more offense. We, we touched upon it earlier, but, um, you know, what did you see from this, uh, from this new quarterback on Tuesday at practice? Um, I actually uh, headed out to uh, Geneva to work with him. Um, oh, nice. And um, he's, he shows some promise. Great. Um, real smart kid. Um, really experienced. He uh, came from a winner mm -hmm. at uh, Geneva High School. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see um, how he meshes with um, the rest of our offense and, and kind of runs the show on Saturday. Yeah, sounds great. You got you got Henry Henry Bradley, the uh, the, the the battering ram, yeah. and um, excited to see what the offense is going to do this yeah. week versus Troy. Yeah. And Kaz Rouser showed up to practice on time <laughs> Tuesday, so he'll get to start to you know play that this game. So he's a big addition. Got to have oh, him too. I've never seen a guy look more miserable on the sideline than he was last. <laughs> hey, week. those are the rules. You don't come to practice. You don't play, and you know sitting him. Uh, didn't bother me in the least. It's all about discipline with this game. And if you don't come to practice, you're not going to play. So, so five o'clock, Seward Field, Seward Saturday School, night. 52 Metcalf Drive, and it's going to be a mud bowl. I talked to Ryan Ryan Job, who uh, runs the Troy Fighting Irish, and he was telling me how his new white uniforms just came in. I said, "Well, I said hope you got a couple trash bags because it's supposed to rain pretty much the rest of the week." So. Yep. Uh, they're wearing white, and they'll probably be brown by the end of the game. Well, but uh, it's, it's 75 and sunny, and the weather couldn't be nicer. I bet that that, that field is pretty wet still right now. Hey, yesterday there was a little standing water on it. But we'll be back at Holland Stadium. we got a, a three-game uh, road uh, journey to take, and then uh, then we're back home. So Yeah, you know, in central New York, there is no better place to watch a football game Highly recommend that you get out to Holland Stadium, obviously for the pride, but for Auburn High School football as well. That was nice to see uh, Saturday. A lot of people in the yeah. stands. I mean, that it's was, good start. you know, it's getting bigger, it's getting better. And I think if, uh, you know, you came to the game Saturday night, you, you got a little excited because them boys were out there hitting. Yeah, it's definitely big time football. It's, yep. uh, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. And, uh, once Coach Bell's offense gets up and running and up to its potential, um, you know, it's going to be quite a show. They'll get there. They'll get there. Got a lot of work to do, but uh, they have the tools in place, and we'll see what happens. Yeah. Great. All right, this is the Sports Express Network. We'll be right back. You guys really kicked it in a gear after that, after a couple of uh, rough games, I think, against Wheatsport. I can't remember the other one, but then kick off that nine-game winning streak, which propelled you all, all the way through. You know, what do you attribute to that uh, strong finish? Um, I mean, we knew the second half of our schedule was a bit on the easier side rather than the first half, but um, I mean, our bats got especially hot. Everyone, everyone was hitting the ball. Um, our, we're cutting down on the airs, and we were just playing better baseball as a team. All right. Well, what's the future hold for you? I'm going to Siena College. Wow, great and school. Probably going to major in business. Major in business? Mm -hmm. Still play baseball? Yeah, I'll probably try out for the club team. All right. What about football? They don't have a football team or anything over there. But hey, maybe I'll look into rugby. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, here with senior captain Jimmy Libertor, the catcher of the baseball team. First things first, I gotta tell you, you know, I was talking to you the other day about catching for 14 innings. You said you were a little bit sore. So, uh, you know, I went to a Little League practice. I think I caught three innings in a Little League game and I couldn't walk for about three days. So, uh, I can't imagine catching 14 innings, but you sure did a, a fantastic job. A lot of big hits, you know, you were the power hitter in that lineup. What's your favorite moment of the season? Favorite moment was probably as a team, winning the section, but uh, the walk off I had versus Marcellus was definitely really exciting. Um, that game was a lot of fun for me. But championship game, section three, Class B championship game against West Hill, bottom of the 14th inning. You come up to the plate with uh, a runner on first base. What's going through your head? Earlier in the game, I haven't, I didn't really get, like put the ball in play that much. I struck out I think once or twice, but I just tried to make contact with the ball. And, the first pitch was a fastball. Fastball, you ripped it down the right field line, and uh, the rest is history. Yeah. Uh, so, what goes through your head? You know the game's over. 
and just to explain your feelings at that time. It was, it was great. It was, I mean, the first sectional title in 15 years for the team, but it was my first sectional title too. So. Are you going to play some yep. soccer in college? Yeah, I'm playing at RIT. Playing at RIT. Your brother also goes yep. to RIT, yep. so yep. family affair. Jack, just congratulations on the Section 3 championship. Thank you. And, uh, you know, just put it in, in your words about the season and you know, say what you want to say. Um, I think what was unique about our team, especially the seniors, we were all good friends off the field. And um, when we lost those games that we scored in West Hill, I think everyone kind of like, not, not, obviously didn't quit, but we're down and thought like, like we're kind of questioning what we had. Sure. And then we just started to win games and then everyone, everything just came together and got it done. Any good stories about Coach Warner at all? Uh, cutting his hair before the Sesquicentennial kind of Valley game was pretty fun, um, and then I think the three weeks, like at three weeks of the year, Coach had like it was just turned fun, and it was just fun <laughs> every day at practice. But yeah, you know, all of you guys have kind of watched grow up and do some great things, and you know, I think what's so special about you is um, you just seem to be such a good teammate. You know, you're the, the horse on the team, throwing all these innings, getting all these these batters out. <clears throat> never once saw you drop your head, and never once saw you get on a teammate for, for an error. Um, you know, what, what, what's up with that? Is that kind of a mantra that you try to live by or what? Um, I really try not to put people down, just tell them, get the next one. Yeah. So, um, and with Jimmy's game, um, the Marcellus one, I actually told him, you know, he said he was having a tough game. I was like, hey, you're going to come up here clutch in the end, guarantee it. And then he hits that double win in the game. Oh, so that's fantastic. So I was trying to pick him up. Yeah, I think we've probably been through this already, but first round of the playoffs, you know, you pitch seven innings, and you give up two hits, nine strikeouts, something along those lines. You guys win in the bottom of the seventh. Next game against Camden. That kick from Camden was pretty good. Yeah, 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 it was. It was quite impressive. Yeah, so, but so much fun. That game, you go into the eighth inning, complete the eighth inning. And I believe one hit and 14 strikeouts. So that's, yeah, that's, that's, great. that's yeah. a pretty, pretty good performance, you know, all the way through the, the, the sectional game. And then you guys picked you up. Tommy picked you up yeah. Um, yeah. in the Marce in, excuse me, in the, in the West Hill game, and, and Jack picked you up as well. That's just going to make you feel great about your team. Too. Yeah, I really, um, was really proud of the guys, how they, we all stuck together and kept our heads up. And so just guys got their, their act together and uh, carried it all the way through. Um, for all of us, it was hard deck city through that, uh, that that playoff run, one nothing, one nothing, 14 innings. Uh, I guess you guys did give us a, uh, a little breather with an 8-2 win over Salve, but... Yeah. Um, Even then. Uh, yeah, so. <laughs> you're a relatively young guy, did you get some great hair through that process? Well, I don't, don't let the cool calm to be nah. on the outside uh, fool you. Uh, you know, I, sometimes I'd come to the dog at home pub gym, our assistant coach, you know, I can't take this, I can't take this enough. But you just got to keep going. Um, you can't give up. And you know, luckily, we had a group of seniors that um, you know played together as a team. They were great teammates, and you know they all contributed in some way. And uh, we kind of we kind of used them to lead the way. You know, I knew this was a special group of kids, and I I never took after I realized that I didn't want it to you know close by so quickly. I didn't want to take a, a single day coaching these guys for granted. Sure. So I guess. And, you know, I guess that made me appear more relaxed, like I was having more fun, but I wanted to make sure I enjoyed every day with these guys sure. because you don't get a group of kids like this. Uh, some coaches don't ever, so, yeah. All right. yeah. Well, congratulations, Coach. Right, thank you. So now you set the bar high, and uh, future future teams are going to have to live up to the, you know, the example that these guys have set. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. So, Coach, a couple of issues in the world of sports that I wanted to get your opinion on. Oh, boy. Here we go. Number one, U.S. women's national team beats Thailand 13-0 to in the first round of the Women's World Cup. Everyone is giving them a hard time saying that uh, unsportsmanlike, no one should have to win a game by that score. What are your thoughts on that? I have no idea what he's talking about, to be perfectly honest with you. If it doesn't have anything to do with football, I couldn't <laughs> It is you. football. The rest of the world calls it football. Uh, listen. All right. So let's put do it they in. All, do they all get participation trophies, too? They do not. 
This is the real deal, elite athletes. This is an absolute spectacle across the world. Let me put it to you in this uh, this framework. All right, help me um, out a little bit. Yeah. So the Syracuse Strong plays against, let's say, the Utica Mud Dogs and wins by a score of 156 to nothing. What do you think about that? Because that's about what we're talking about, a 13 to nothing shellacking in soccer. That's what it comes down to. Well... First of all, in that situation, the points that you score go towards your, I guess, ranking. That is correct. There's a goal so, differential. So, <laughs> you don't have a problem. I, I, with I would have scored 18, but I mean, you know, <laughs> listen, it, I, you know, I've coached Pop Warner, I've coached high school. Yeah. I pull the dogs off if I'm if I'm you know, if I'm comfortably ahead, then yeah, you know, I get, you know, more people playing time and see what they have to offer. I'm not that kind of guy, but I've been on the other side of it where, you know, teams have scored 50 on me and quite frankly, we deserve it because we're not that good or we made too many mistakes. Yeah. But So this isn't Pop Warner. This isn't youth. This isn't even semi-professional. These are the world's <clears throat> premier Women athletes playing the game of soccer. I would have scored and 18. if it's 13, 15, 18, who cares? So what do you have to say to the people who are complaining about this? This is, I got to be careful what I say here. But uh, <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot, coach. Hey man, it's, you know, we, we, as a society, it's, you know, you got to work for stuff, man. You've got to, you got to work hard for what you want and just, you know, and you need to be rewarded when you do work hard. Yeah, and it's, you know, I guess I'm a, I'll am probably get all sorts of heat for this, but uh, no, I would have scored 18. All right. You know, gotcha. in that kind of setting, but. Okay. You know. Second issue, NBA Finals. I did not watch them. Okay. I was too busy watching football film for hours, getting so, angry. I'll set it up for you. Kevin Durant, one of the best basketball players in the world, coming off an injury. We're in game six of the NBA Finals where the Toronto Golden Raptors. State, yep. Yep. Toronto Raptors have never won a world championship. They're three to two. They win. They get their first championship ever. Kevin Durant lighting it up in the first quarter, scores 11 points. Start of the second quarter, he goes down, tears his Achilles tendon. Mm. Fans up in Toronto start cheering the fact that Kevin Durant got hurt. And all of social media is going ballistic about the unsportsman like fans up in Toronto. What do you think of that? It's professional sports. He went down with an injury. Um, you know, if something happened where Kevin Durant died, I mean, okay, I could I could see that, but listen, it's I guess I'm a different breed. I mean you know, when my New York Giants are playing the Dallas Cowboys, you know, I don't like to see anybody get injured. But, you know, if Dak Prescott went down with an injury. Would you cheer it? No, I probably wouldn't yeah. cheer it. No, I, I don't. You know, in the game of football, injuries like that, no, I'd feel bad for him. But in the back of my mind, I'm, you know, not happy, but I'm, I'm okay with it. All right. <laughs> Well, I like your segment, and I like you know the way that you view the world and the way you view sports. So I'm going to try to come up with more of these issues in it each and every week because I want to see what your reaction is. Yeah, stop the participation trophies. you got to stop. <laughs> okay, that's a wrap.